Well, let's get to some social questions. Yes. Um, do you think we are too concerned with being politically correct in today's environment? Uh, I don't think I don't think so. I think the main thing is just that we shouldn't be, and I've done it myself, is if you get accused of not being politically correct on a certain term, because the terms are just changing so much. Like I know in the gay community as a gay person, I'm always asking my younger gay friends of like, can I say this? Is this okay to say? Or, mm -hmm. And so I think it's all about just it, it has opened up, it's broken open this communication where sometimes some, someone will say, I don't like when people say that, it's insulting, it, it triggers this, it makes this. I like knowing that. I don't want people to be sitting there cringing when you're saying a certain thing. Some things and many things are absolutely like, thank God people are not putting them in, in scripts and in comedy and all that now. But I think the little nuances that sometimes people go, oh, you're too, too politically incorrect. I think it's good. It's forcing us to kind of hear from every voice. Was the environment of 30 Rock as fun as the show looked? It was really fun. Uh, it was very, very fun. I was only there for one year, and it was really only logistically about schedule because their schedule was just relentless. The writing schedule there, it was just endlessly long days, and because they had like twenty something episodes every year to be doing, right. and so and I was older, so if I would have gone there earlier, I think I would have just like been there the whole time. Um, but yes, the writers' room was absolute hilarity but also just crazy, uh, meticulous. You looked at the wall and Robert Carlock was the you know, executive producer and his, his notes and his writing, it was like the most beautiful mind sort of board of stories and interacting stories. And you don't realize that when you watch a half hour comedy that people put that much time into it, but that's why it was such a successful, great show. I have a question. Yes. So this wasn't on social, but do you remember the first time you were ever in a writer's room? Yes. Do you remember the first time you ever like spoke out? And, and you said that you had something that you thought was a good idea. I, I think I remember one time suggesting it was when women were allowed into the military school, and I can't think of the name of the military academy, that it was like the first woman that was going to be allowed to be a, a, a student at the military academy. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and it was, uh, I think, one of our first shows when I came there in the 90s. And I was like, I wanted to do a thing where she pretends she's a boy, and then she goes in with all the guys in the barracks, and then she's you know, going to see what really happens, because she's feeling it out. And then they all sit and read horoscopes and stuff. <laughs> they're just like really female in their way. They interact with each other when they're alone. And I remember suggesting that, and then I remember someone at the table at the time going like, or she could just be like the new woman there and really hot. <laughs> and I remember being like. Yeah, or that. I'm like, but that's not funny. But uh, of that era, it yeah. was like, that was a move a lot of times of like, if there's gonna be one woman that comes in, what if the guys are like falling apart because she's so hot? Mm -hmm. And it's just not, not a go-to anymore in any comedy of like, it's just funny that she's hot. Because yeah. guess who doesn't get to do the fun thing? The woman, <laughs> she's right. playing hot. I mean, I try not to play hot that much because it's not that fun. No, it's, That's it's, why I don't do it. It's a burden. Who am I talking to? I'm like, <laughs> around. I have a lot of dolls I brought from QVC <laughs> that I just sat down here that are very realistic. I'm working the crowd. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.